time in Hong Kong was obviously uh, when I was actually in the family. It was taught in the family, and I started about uh, three and a half years old. And uh, in the Chinese, we call it five years old, but uh, because we count it as one year the day you were born. <coughs> and uh, the training was hard, and just, uh, as a matter of fact, I was considered to be uh, forced into it, if you like, because it's taught in the family. And uh, you don't have a choice. You just carry on doing it and training. Uh, usually, it trained about four hours every day. Uh, in the evening until uh, about um, seven and uh, eleven o'clock, I mean, and um, and then you're allowed to rest. But uh, these will carry on for about um, uh, all year round. There's no holiday, no weekend, no bank holiday, and uh, the only the two days that you do not train is New Year's Eve, Chinese, and the New Year's Day. My grandfather was the teacher. It's very, very hard. Uh, we usually do about uh, hard working and horse stands and basic training for about nine months before you're allowed to learn anything else. Um, of course, at that time, there is no such thing as grading systems. All you ever do is that you train until he's satisfied. Then you might be allowed to make a step forward to learn something else. So the training was very, very hard. There's never let off, and you just have to sweat it out. After many years of actually training, finally, uh, when I came to England in the 61, well, I carry on training, but at the same time, uh, at that time, nobody knows what Kung Fu is all about. So you just work like everybody else. <coughs> but eventually, then uh, in 1972, and somebody approached me and asked me to teach them. And that's how I actually started. I think in the beginning, it's, it's, it has to do with uh, a lot to do with Bruce Lee, uh, the time that he made the famous being a film star and all that. Um, it, it brought in good things and it brought in bad things. The good thing was that to make Kung Fu known in this country, the bad thing was that people think Kung Fu is all just flying through the air. And obviously, given a little bit of a wrong image to a lot of people, because learning Kung Fu, it isn't just learning how to do the technique. It is not just learning how to fight. It is a way of life, the philosophy. And it also has a lot of culture and also the medicine in itself. So yes, you need to teach people step by step. You need to try to change them so that they will follow you. But other, some people obviously are willing to do so, and other people are not. Oh, it's a lot to do with mental attitude, yes. And also you change the way to sort of accept uh, the way that we taught. And if you're not receptible in the way of teaching, then of course you're not going to be a very good student. As a student choose an instructor, and an instructor should also choose a student as well. I think uh, <coughs> Kung Fu, it is not all that much difference, really. You've got two arms, you've got two legs. And everybody doing the same thing. You can only do so many movements with your arms and legs. But the difference, I think, is the way that you teach more than anything else. Uh, some, many of the instructors, they show you the move and forget about it. And uh, other people would take the bother to adjust, to explain, to put all through the uh, uh, practicing and experience or different way to bring the student into a way of training. I think that way makes the difference.
Well, it is not important to use weapons because, let's face it, we're not going to take a weapon walking around on the street or anything. But it is a culture. It is a heritage. But at the same time, it also teaches you a kind of coordination and its knowledge of how you use different kind of weapons. Okay, you might not be able to bring a broadsword in the street, but if you are in trouble, you might be able to pick up something, represent something, or a weapon that you might be able to use. You have the knowledge to do so. I think uh, it's not only fit in physically, it's also a fitness in the mental attitude as well. Uh, it also gives you a lot of confidence when you train. But fitness itself, obviously, it is important. But at the same time, people must learn to understand that fitness is not just outside physical, it must be also internally as well. I think the people who join Kung Fu, they first have to ask themselves, what do they want out of it? And then go and find a club or an instructor. Do not join, go and watch them first, see how they teach, not once, but go in it two, three times to check out how they teach, how they treat you, how they treat other students, or if it's necessary, mingle with other students, have a little chat with them to find out properly. Because otherwise, once you join a, a bad club, I think it's not very good for you for the rest of your time. Although you can quit, but at the same time, you might get in a, such a bad habit that it might take you a couple of years before you find out, and it's very difficult to change bad habits. I like to see a lot more people who really care about martial arts about Kung Fu rather than a lot of politicians. Um, I think like everything else, politicians are the people who ruin everything else. I think it's just genuine people who practice martial arts would not have to worry about things like that. They should be left alone, work and train with it. And people, I would wish more instructors are more cared about their students than anything else.